Hey Bubble folks, what's up? This is Damien from BubbleHacks.io and in today's 5 minute tutorial I'm gonna walk you through making your bubble apps going from looking like this to looking like this. I actually made a very similar video a few weeks back using a combination of CSS code and bubble conditionals. I got a ton of great feedback so I decided to make an updated version using something called CSS media queries instead of conditions in the bubble editor. This way we can have all our styling in one place, which gives us a much better overview if you have large apps. If you haven't watched this video, I highly recommend watching it, links in description, because I won't go through all the fundamentals in today's video. Okay, let's dive right in. Let's have a look at our app that we're going to optimize. We have some sort of landing page with a text up here, a logo which is centered, vertically centered and we have a button, two buttons uh, at the bottom which are currently grouped. And as always if we want to work with using CSS code first things we need to do is go to our settings general and make sure that the expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements is checked and secondly we want to install the classify plugin. And then if you want a CSS code, add CSS code to our app. Usually the simplest way is to just add an HTML element to our page and then open and close a style tag. This lets your browser know that in between we're going to define some CSS styles. And by the way, don't worry um, if, you, if I'm too quick because I'm going to use some copy and paste today. Um, I will post the link to the editor in the description below so you can always just head there and copy and paste it to your own apps. So the first thing that we want to do is getting rid of this white space down here and make our blue background use the full page. We've done this in the last video. So we can define a class called full height and add this and the class as a proper height property of 100% of the vertical height. So basically the full uh, the viewport height, so basically our full screen. Let's go add this class to our background group using classify and see if that worked. Okay, this happens. By the way, I'm using a Chrome plugin called Responsive Viewer here. It's actually great, so this didn't work. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we're missing a quote here. Closing the quotes. It's actually always easy to miss something up. Good, that works now. The second thing we want to do is move our buttons further down on the large screen and move them a bit up on the smaller screen so we don't have to scroll down. Um, what I actually want to do is using a calculation or CSS code to keep this distance from the bottom always constant. So the first thing that we want to do is select our buttons. So you see I grouped this into a group, so I want to select the whole group, give it a class called buttons, go back to our style, and then we want to select a class and give it a top margin property. So what I want to do is, and I'll just copy paste this here, keep the video as short as possible. We select our class buttons and give it a margin on the top so just up here to move the whole group down, which is a calculation of 100% of the viewport height, so that's the size of the screen on which the app is rendered, minus 812 pixels, which is the height of our app. And this basically makes sure that our buttons always stay. So if the screen gets larger, we add margin on top. If the screen gets smaller, we get a negative margin on top and move the buttons around. As always, give this an important rule to make sure it's actually rendered in bubble. So we have defined our class here. It's applied to our button group and let's see if that worked. Okay, great. We see now our buttons behave like a bubble floating group, keeping the distance to the bottom always good. The second thing we want to do, or the third thing we want to do is vertically center this logo here. So let's go to our logo and give it a group called center and then a class called center. Let's go back to our styles, 
and select this class. And again, here we're going to use a calculated margin on top. We again take the height of the screen minus the height of our current editor size and divide it by two because we want to vertically center it. So as the screen changes in height, we add margin on top. Let's see if this worked. Okay, beautiful. It's not always centered. It looks good on the large screen, on the normal screen, it also looks good. And on the small screen, here is where the <coughs> where the conditions that we want to achieve with the media queries, come, media queries come in as we want to move this further up and the buttons further down. So first things first, let's define a media query. This is how it looks like. And this is basically saying if our app is rendered on a medium with a maximum height of 700 pixels, this is 700 pixels or smaller, do whatever is inside of here. And what we want to do here is select the class. Uh, actually, first we need to add a class of top here. So I'm just going to copy paste this, give this a class of top. And then let's give this class some properties in here. So in our media query, four screens, seven pixels or smaller, we want to select the class top and give it a top margin of minus 60 pixels. So it's a negative margin. It will move the whole thing up. And also, since we're here, let's again select our buttons class and give it an additional margin of 60 pixels. So you see the calculation here, 800% of the viewport height minus 812 pixels. It's the same that we used up here and we give it an additional 60 pixels to move it further down. So again, adding margin at the top is moving the body further down. Let's see if this worked. Okay, great. Looks good on the small screen now as well. If you enjoyed that, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter at bubblehacks.io and see you soon. Goodbye.